today on what it's like two iconic land yachts 1976 Cadillac Eldorado convertible this was the last convertible that was offered by Cadillac until they made another one in the 80s and a Lincoln Mark V the more comparable episode would be a Lincoln Mark IV versus this but you could buy a Lincoln Mark V in 1977 and buy this car in 77 as well as a 76 model year find out which one's better on this episode of what it's like but before getting into all of that i am jay welcome to what it's like this channel we feature the classics vintage some exotics lots of orphan cars and cars that are off the beaten path if that sounds of interest to you subscribe and hit that bell icon next to it to never miss a video if you'd like to get in touch with me for any reason whatsoever Two ways are the best ways. Leave a comment in the comment section below. I read and answer all comments posted. Second way is we have a Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. There's no obligation to join. Just simply saying that it's a thing and if you're interested, all of that information will be in the link in the description. All right, we're gonna do the specs right out of the gate. Starting with the Cadillac, 224.1 inches long, 79.8 inches wide, 54.1 inches tall. It rides a wheelbase of 126.3 inches. It's also worth mentioning that the Cadillac is front wheel drive. Weighs 5,080 pounds. Price was $11,050, which is equivalent to you spending $54,023.92 in the year 2022. Total 1976 Cadillac production was 309,139 units, of which 14,000 were the Eldorado convertibles. Moving on to engine, it was powered by the 500 cubic inch displacement V8, 8.2 liters, it makes 215 horsepower, 400 pound feet of torque. This one has the fuel injection unit, so it makes more horsepower. Moving on to the Lincoln Mark 230.3 inches long, 79.7 inches wide, 53 inches tall, rides a wheelbase of 120.4 inches, weighs 4,650 pounds, price $11,400, which is equivalent to you spending $55,735.09 in the year 2022. Total 1977 Lincoln production was 191,355 units, of which 80,321 were the Lincoln Mark Vs. Moving on to the engine under the hood of the Lincoln Mark V, 400 cubic inch displacement V8, 6.6 .6 liters. It makes 179 horsepower, 329 foot pounds of torque. So looking at these numbers side by side, there's a lot of very interesting things going on. So you just saw the Lincoln and the Cadillac side by side. On paper, the Lincoln is bigger, but in reality, it looks like the Cadillac is bigger. Go figure. The Cadillac is wider, taller, has a longer wheelbase. It weighs almost 500 pounds more than the Lincoln. Also, I thought the Cadillac always cost more than the Lincoln Mark V, but it's turning out that it's... The Lincoln Mark V actually cost $1,700 and change more than the Cadillac. The Cadillac also makes more power than the Lincoln. 36 more horsepower, 71 more pound-feet of torque. This door is insanely heavy. It's like moving a bank vault to get in this. Very heavy door. So just check out all the different materials used on this door panel. Lots of stuff going on. This is fake wood. It's like plastic wood. This is the door handle to pull the door closed. Door locks, windows. This one has um, all four windows go down in this one. This one has a window lock control. Toggle, mirror, remote mirror style. Just check out this interior. Getting inside, let's talk about door weight. This door is very heavy, but it's not nearly as heavy as the door over there. Let's talk about this door panel. So notice this part here is actually the ashtray for the rear occupants. It's on the big, the door's so big that this is the ashtray for the rear passengers. 
and here's all the other button switches and knobs this controls the mirror and it's like toggle switch style just like in the Cadillac these control the seats for the rear tilt front tilt this moves the seat back forward up down these are for the windows left front right front and the door lock button Let's check out this interior Alright, so actually getting inside. Just open the door up like that. Door opens up quite a ways. Just come on right in here like this. Got the Lincoln Mark V. Door is so much lighter. The Lincoln Mark V door is so much lighter than the Cadillac's door. Look at these wipers. Here's the wiper switch. Here's the windshield washer button three speeds low medium and high and then you could set it to a delay this one's got the automatic twilight sentinel and you can adjust if you want them to stay on or not if you want to override the system you pull these lights out here are the climate control settings this is a climate control dial to adjust the temperature and here's the settings you have off economy low auto high by level defrost this car has cruise control which is activated with this switch here is the gauge cluster top speed of this car is 100 miles an hour speedometer goes up to 100 miles per hour park reverse neutral drive low the fuel gauge is up on top here I don't know if you can see it it's right in the back there and then there's a panel of um idiot lights that shine right here in front of you the clock is right in here as well moving to the steering wheel this is what first person would look like looking over the hood lots of room underneath this steering wheel and if there isn't enough room this has tilt wheel this control stick here moves the wheel moves the wheel up and down to the desired position this stock here does the turn signals as well as there's a button on the end for cruise control but you have to turn the cruise control on before you hit the button a bunch of switches this is for the convertible top this is for the rear defroster and this is for power antenna this one here this toggle switch controls the mirror passenger side mirror radio with radio controls it's AM FM radio ashtray vanity mirrors and lights for the passenger side for the driver's side doesn't have them on the driver's side I love the fact that all of the gauges everything is more driver oriented it's got an 8-track player with quadraphonic sound AM FM radio this car has this is a lighter that's what that looks like this is for the other mirror it's toggle switch operated here's an over the hood impression of what it's like to sit behind the wheel of the Lincoln Mark V here is what first person looks like nice sun visors no courtesy mirrors on the driver's side but there is a courtesy mirror on the passenger side but it doesn't have any lights or anything daytime nighttime mirror this is what i look like in the 76 eldorado there is lots of headroom and like i said if there isn't enough headroom this is a convertible you can put the top down here's what i look like in the driver's seat i got adequate headroom if i cut my hair i'd have more headroom my hair is very poofy on to the glove box test here's our glove box test subject here's my hand for reference here's our glove box in question and if the camera does not fit in the glove box that doesn't mean that the car is a bad car i just like shoving seemingly large objects into tiny spaces fits in the glove box onto the glove box test here's our test subject here is my hand for reference 
Here is the glove box in question. No, it's not going to fit in that glove box. All right, getting into the back seat. So you just push the seat forward and see how that goes down like that. But that is all the space that you have to get into the back. Up nice and wide. All right, sitting in the back of the Cadillac Eldorado, I got, there's less headroom in this car than there is in the Lincoln, that's for sure. And there's less knee room, but it's actually surprisingly comfortable back here, all things considered. There's a handle. The Lincoln did not have a handle on the back here. It has two types of material. It has the leather and then it has carpet. Here's my knees. There's also an ashtray here with a cigarette lighter, as well as a window control switch, which the Lincoln didn't have. Here's what the seat back profile looks like. It's slightly reclined. It's not straight 90 degrees. Over here, same thing, got an ashtray with cigarette lighter, as well as window switch for the windows, because these windows do go down, as well as the top goes down as well. This car doesn't have a dome light on the convertible top. Nor does it have a center armrest back here. Getting in the rear seat of the Lincoln Mark V. So you just move the seat out of the way like this, and that is how much space you have to get back there. All right, so I am in the back of the Lincoln Mark V, and man, there is a lot of room back here. It feels like there's actually more headroom in the back than there is in the front. So rear seat occupants have a nice armrest here. Opera windows and lights. There's a coat hook. These windows are fixed, they don't go down. But notice where the seat belt is for the drivers into the ceiling, that's pretty cool. Here's the dome white. Over here, another armrest. Same thing that's on the driver's sides on the passenger side, coat hook, light above the opera window. This car does not have a center armrest. This is how much space I have between my knee and the front seat. And here's a look at what the seat looks like against a solid surface. As you can see, it's reclined a little bit. It's very comfortable back here. It's a very nice place to be for as small as it looks back here. You, you can fit two adults back here comfortably, three if you were in a pinch. This is what it looks like from the back seat looking forward. Getting under the hood in this one, pull the hood release. It's right in here and it's super heavy. This is the heaviest hood that I've ever picked up. So this one's a very special one. It's got fuel injection. The easiest way to tell if it has fuel injection is this air cleaner is gold and it also says electronic fuel injection around it there's also a tag at the back that says fuel injection getting under the hood of the lincoln mark 5 pull the hood release which is inside and then this one the catch is actually inside here just check out that engine This one's got the 400 cubic inch displacement. The easiest way to tell the difference between the 400 and the 460 is the 460 has a blue air cleaner. Just wanna show you all the lights. So when you turn the turn signal on, the turn signal indicator's down here. This is a cornering light. So you can see around the corner, feature they don't put on cars anymore. 
some more lights. You got a light here. There's lights down inside the foot wells. On the other side of the door, there's also a light back here so you can see back, get back in the back. I apologize for this footage. I must have accidentally bumped a setting, like a time-lapse setting, and that's why the video's all fidgety, but I wanted to show you the pop-up headlights on the Lincoln. While they're technically not pop-up headlights, more or less the headlight panel just moves out of the way and shows the headlights behind them. Also, check out the cornering light. It's at the bottom on the Lincoln. I also love the turn signal markers. They have the Lincoln logo inside of them. So I wanted to show you all these lights. You got lights down here at the bottom of the doors. There's lights inside of all the footwells. Nice big dome light up there. All the lights back here, like it by the opera windows. It's also lights down inside the footwells. Lots of lights in the Lincoln. All right, coming back here to the Cadillac tail end design. It is also very pointy, but look at this. Just check out how this overhangs. Kind of, it almost looks like a scoop and I can fit my hand in here. Move this out of the way. It goes opposite way of the Lincoln. This is what the trunk looks like in the Eldorado. It's got all these pieces. These go up on top of the convertible top. I'm not going to get all of this out of here, but you'll just have to take my word that it is actually a really deep trunk. Lots of space, just like the Lincoln. This one's got a power trunk feature. Put the trunk down to here. Closes the rest of the way. Just check out this rear design of the Lincoln. I love the fake tire bulge here. It was real on the Continental Mark II, but this is, this is fake. I love the lights here, how they come down. This car is just pointy. Everywhere the light hits, it has a point. So getting into the trunk, just move that out of the way. And, it, and just check out how big that trunk is. That's a full size spare tire jack, tire iron, as well as all four of these wheel covers that originally came on the car. It's got wire wheel covers on it now. Trunk closes like that. The crazy thing about this driving experience is this has the biggest engine that GM ever put in a car from the factory and it does not suffer from torque steer being front wheel drive. Yes, it only has 215 horsepower, but it's got 400 foot pounds of torque, which is a lot of torque and it does not torque steer, which is a common characteristic of front wheel drive cars. They like to torque steer or it's a term given to when you put down the power, it, the steering wheel jerks to the left or the right. This car does not suffer from that. All right, so I chose this road because this road isn't the straightest road. This car soaks up the bumps a whole lot better than the Cadillac does. They both give you that floaty ride, don't get me wrong, but the Cadillac every now and then when you hit a bump, you can actually feel the bump. This thing, you don't feel any of it. It just sails over all of the bumps kind of like the over the hood impression of this car better and it's all going to come down to personal preferences really i definitely like the first person look i like the um the gauges in this are nicer but here's what first person looks like the cool thing about the Lincolns anyway, especially like if you get into the AOD transmissions, the ones that are in like the late 80s town cars, if you putt putt it up to about 20 miles an hour and slam on the gas, it like takes off like a rocket. All right, so we're going 25. Pulls a little harder, but it doesn't move like the 80s town car did. 
Both cars steer with relative ease. There's no struggling turning these cars. I like the steering wheel in this one more. It's thinner, but I did like the wood grain around the perimeter of the steering wheel and the Cadillac, it was nice. But this steering wheel is thinner in the Lincoln and I, I love it. I'm a sucker for a thin steering wheel. Man, I love the over the hood look in the Lincoln. It's so pointy. It feels so elegant. Even looking at the gauges, like the hood gauge combo, it's so much nicer in the Lincoln in my opinion. So this car does have an insane amount of body lean that I did not feel in the Cadillac. But I didn't really take any real sharp turns in the Cadillac either. We'll say this has more pickup than the Cadillac does, which is weird because the Cadillac has more torque as well as power than this car does. But this definitely feels smoother. It definitely leans more when you turn. So I'm floored. That's 50. It's not terribly fast, but it's ridiculously smooth. It's smooth as silk. Driving impressions. Let's start with the Cadillac. The Cadillac rides and drives smooth. It's slow to accelerate, but it makes up for it with the ride. It's, a, it's really hard to believe that it's front wheel drive because front wheel drive gets such a bad stigma. But if you blindfolded somebody, they wouldn't be able to tell the difference, really. Or if you put somebody in there that's not really a car person, they wouldn't be able to tell the difference that it's front wheel drive as opposed to rear wheel drive. That's how smooth it is. I took both the Cadillac and the Lincoln down this um, really rough road and for whatever reason the footage went, I must have bumped another button on the GoPro and it didn't come out right so I couldn't even use the footage but the Cadillac hit a bump on that road where it wasn't totally smooth. The Lincoln hit the same bump and it sailed right over it. So let's talk about the Lincoln. The Lincoln rides better in my opinion than the Cadillac and um it's just so much smoother and it just feels so much more elegant than the cadillac when you're looking over the hood at those beautiful gauges it's just a better driving experience in my opinion than the cadillac i will say though there is way more body lean in the lincoln but none of them nose dived when you hit the brakes hard or at least not for me both the lincoln and the cadillac did not nose dive but there was more body lean with the lincoln all right, on to the pros and cons. I generally get the pros and cons from the complete book of collectible cars, blue chip auto investments, but I've already done comprehensive reviews on both of these cars. So I wanted to tell you what I thought, like what I liked and what I didn't like about each car, starting with the Cadillac, things I like. Rides nice, lots of options and features such as cruise control and the Twilight Sentinel, which was the automatic headlights, nice comfy seats, which I sank into like a leather couch. The door handle to get out, which we'll get back to because I'm not a huge fan of where the Lincolns is. It's really hard to find sometimes. Things I don't like about the Cadillac. The dashboard is way too generic for the class of car that it is. I mean, think about it. They use the long rectangular style speedometers and the Chevys as well as the Ford LTD had it. I just don't think it looks great in this interior. But I like the dashboard and the button layout and I love all the toggle switches. I just don't like the speedometer it looks too generic for me. The other thing I did not like about the Cadillac was it's an absolute pig. According to the internet, it's supposed to get around 13 miles to the gallon, but it didn't get anywhere near that on my drive. I don't think I drove it more than five miles and I left with three quarters of a tank of gas and I came back with half a tank. So five miles driving around took a quarter of a tank. That's that's not good. Moving on to the Lincoln. Things that I like about the Lincoln. I love the over the hood impression. I love the gauges, the ride. It, it rode a whole lot better than the Cadillac. It didn't corner as well as the Cadillac. It leaned a little bit, had a lot more body lean than the Cadillac did, but the ride was better. It seemed to have better pickup, even though on paper, the Cadillacs I think is a whole second faster than the Lincoln, but I did not feel that in the driving experience. Things I wasn't too crazy about the Lincoln for, um, the seats are very firm. I like to, I don't know, the beanbag chair feels good too, but the leather couch feel of the Cadillac 
was better driving experience for me than the Lincoln. But people might like the Lincoln better because it's a more firmer seat. Or at least in R2 cars, that was the case. It was a firmer seat in the Lincoln than it was in the Cadillac. Um, I don't like where the door handle is. Sometimes finding the door handle to get out is really hard because it's tucked up behind the seat, if that makes any sense. If you've ever been in one, you'll know what I'm talking about. The Cadillac door handle is very easy to get to. You're not searching around for it every time that you stop. And the steering wheel, the steering wheel was used in everything Ford made, like Ford van had the same steering wheel, um, Mercury shared the same steering wheel, the st steering wheel was the same across the board, so that kind of looks like a cheap aspect of an expensive car, in my opinion. But I love the feel of it, I just don't like the fact that it's shared across every single platform that Ford owned at the time. So given the choice between the two of them, which one would you choose and why in the comment section below? My pick would be the Lincoln Mark V. I have a soft spot in my heart for the Mark V. Not saying the Cadillac isn't any good. And yes, I like the seats better in the Cadillac, but if you don't sit in the Cadillac, the Lincoln seats are fine. They just, they feel firmer on comparison with the Cadillac. But like I said, if you don't sit in the Cadillac, you'll never know. I also think that Lincoln drives, rides, and handles better, even though it has more body lean. But it's just my personal preference. What is your preference in the comment section? On to name that tune. First person to give me the correct name of the band as well as song title correctly will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. I really appreciate all of the support. And until next time...